good morning everyone myself is kiran maiyi i am lecturer in physics working at government city college today we are going to discuss about the continuation of the special theory of relativity next one is time dilation in ordinary sense the word dilation means to lengthen an interval at time consider two systems s and s dash let s dash be moving with a velocity v with respect to s in the positive direction of x axis suppose a clock is situated in this s at position x and gives signals of intervals that is delta t equals to t2 minus t1 if this interval is observed by an observed in the system s dash then interval t dash recorded by him is given by some transformations t1 equals to t1 minus vx by c square divided by under root 1 minus v square putting the values of t1 dash and t2 dash the above equations can be changed that is delta t dash equals to t2 dash equal minus vx by c square divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square minus t1 minus vx by c square divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square that can be solved and can be shown as delta t equals to under root 1 minus v square by c square this equation shows that delta t dash is less than delta t that is the time interval in system s is greater than the time interval in system s here we observe the following points when v is very small compared to c the factor v square by c square will be negligibly small compared to unity hence delta t dash equals to delta t that is the time interval recorded by a moving clock is the same as that when it is at rest when v is comparable to c under root 1 minus v square by c square will be less than unity and in this case delta t dash is greater than delta t that is the time interval between two events recorded by a moving clock appears to the greater than the time interval between the same events recorded by the clock when it is at rest when v is equal to c or greater than c v square by c square will be equal or greater than unity delta t dash equals to infinity or imaginary that is the time interval becomes infin infinite or imaginary the concept of infinite or imaginary time is nonsense this implies that no material body can have the velocity equal to or greater than the velocity of light concept of simultaneity According to this concept two events which appears to take place simultaneously to an observer observer are in general not simultaneous to another observer in relative motion consider two time bombs explode at the same time t not to an observer on ground let the two bombs are at different places x1 and x2 now consider this situation to a pilot of a spaceship moving with the velocity v relative to ground for him the explosion at x1 occurs at t1 dash equals to t not minus x1 v square v by c square divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square the explosion at x2 occurs at t2 dash equals to t not minus x2 into v by c square are divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square the time interval is given by t2 dash minus t1 dash thus the two events which occur simultaneously to an observer are separated to another observer we conclude that there is no such thing as absolute time which is different for observers in this way time is relative this is different for the for observers in relative motion addition of velocities consider 
two systems S and S dash moving with the velocity V. To relative two system as along positive direction of x. Let us express the velocity of a body in them. Suppose the body moves a distance dx in time dt in systems s and through a distance dx dash in time dt in system s dash then dx by dt equals to u and dx dash by dt dash equals to u. From Lorentz transformation equations we have x equals to r into x dash plus v t dash and t equals to k into t dash plus v x dash by c square. Differentiating the above equations we get dx equals to k into dx dash plus v d t dash dt equals to k into d t dash plus v d x dash by c square. Dividing the first equation by second equation, we get dx by dt equals to k into dx dash plus v t dash by k into dt dash plus v dx dash by c square. By solving that, we get u equals to u dash plus v divided by 1 plus u dash v by c square. The above equation represents the relativistic law of addition of velocities whereas in classical mechanics it is simply u equals to u dash plus v. The following points are observed. When u dash and v are smaller as compared to c, u dash v by c square can be neglected in comparison to unity. Therefore, u equals to u dash plus v which is classical formula when v or u dash equals to c then u equals to u dash plus c divided by 1 plus u dash c by c square that is if one object moves with velocity c with respect to another then their relative velocity is always c whatever may be the velocity of the other Next one is when u dash equals to c equals to v then u equals to c plus c by 1 plus c square by c square that is c. This shows that uh, the addition of velocity of light to the velocity of light merely merely reproduces the velocity of uh, light. Next is Einstein's mass-energy relation. According to classical mechanics, the energy is defined into RMS of work that is force into distance and the force is the rate of change of momentum. Hence, F equals to d by dt of mv. According to theory of relativity, the mass as well as velocity are variables. Thus, F equals to m dv by dt plus v dm by dt. When a particle is displaced through a distance dx by the application of a force F, then the increase in kinetic energy dk is given by dk equals to F dx. Substituting the value of F, we get dk equals to m dv by dt dot dx plus v dm by dt dot dx. That is nothing but dk equals to m dv, mv dv plus v square dm. The variation of mass with velocity is given by m equals to m naught divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square. Squaring both sides, we have m square equals to m naught square c square by c square minus v square. Differentiating the above equation, we get c square 2m dm minus v square 2m dm minus m square 2v dv equals to 0. Therefore, c square dm equals to mv dv plus v square dm. Comparing equations, 
the 4 and 5 we have bk equals to c square dm. Consider that the body is at rest initially and by application of force it acquires a velocity v. The mass of the body increases from m0 to m. The total kinetic energy acquired by the body is given by integral dk equals to integral m0 to m c square dm. That is k equals to c square into m minus m0. This is the increase in kinetic energy due to the increase in mass. We know that total energy of a moving particle is the sum of its kinetic energy of motion and the energy at rest. Thus, total energy equals to E equals to K plus M naught C square. That is E equals to C square into M minus M naught plus M naught C square. That is E equals to M C square. The above equation gives the universal equivalence between mass and energy. Verification. The conversation, uh, the conversion of mass into energy and energy into mass is beautifully illustrated by nature itself. When a particle collides with its antiparticle, there is a mutual annihilation and the total mass is converted into radiant energy. Thus, uh, the conversion of mass takes place in energy. On the other hand, when radiant energy comes near a, near a charged nucleus, particle and antiparticle are created. Thus, the energy is converted into mass. The explanation of mass defect and release of a tremendous amount of energy in nuclear fission is entirely based on a mass-energy relation. This gives a strong support to mass-energy relation. It is observed that the mass of the nucleus is less than the sum of masses of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. This difference in the mass is known as mass defect. During the formation of nucleus, the mass defect is converted in energy E equals to mc square. This energy holds the nucleus together and is called as binding energy. The binding energy per nucleon gives a measure of stability of the nucleus. Sommerfeld explained the fine structure of spectral lines on the basis of a relativistic variation of mass. The agreement of his theory with experiment provides another verification of mass-energy relation. Crom Compton treated the X-ray scattering as an elastic collision between a photon and an electron. Experimentally, the observed a wavelength shift in this collision. By applying the law of conservation of energy and momentum in the light of a mass-energy relation, theoretically calculated the wavelength shift. The theoretical results agree well with the experimental results. Next is four vectors transformation. According to Lorentz transformations, x dash equals to x minus vt by under root 1 minus v square by c square, y dash equals to y, z dash equals to z and t dash equals to t minus vx by c square and divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square. Substitute x1 equals to x, x2 equals to y, x3 equals to z and x4 equals to ict. The substituting we get x1 dash equals to x minus vx4 by lc divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square and x2 dash equals to x2, x3 dash equals to x3, x4 dash equals to to x4 minus i into v x1 by c and divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square. Similarly, the transformation of a four vector a that is a1, a2, a3 and a4 are from analogy of the above equation. 
a1 dash equals to a1 plus i into v a4 by c divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square. A2 dash equals to A2, A3 dash equals to A3, A4 dash equals to A4 minus I into V A1 by C divided by 1 minus V square by C square. The length of a 4 vector remains uncharged under Lorentz tangent. A1 uh, dash square plus uh, A2 dash, A3 dash square plus A4 dash square. That solving that uh, we get... Uh, a1 plus i v a4 by c square c by under root 1 minus v square by c square whole square plus a2 square plus 3 square a4 minus i into v a1 by c divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square whole square.